Hello, Guru Nation. Welcome back to another episode of uh, Random Musings. This is going to go on the podcast, too, because it's like 20 minutes or maybe a little longer. It hits the sweet spot for a podcast. And actually, I haven't done a podcast in like a week. It's been busy. But fri- I'm making up for it not only today. You guys get this one. But Friday, I'm recording like three podcasts in Friday, which is why, Chris, I might be late to one of our calls. But, um, you know, we're going to p- keep bringing you content keep hitting you over the head with this content all right because it's important and by the way make sure chris i never showed you this all right make sure you subscribe like comment and hit the bell button so you get reminders so let's go through that again subscribe like hit the bell button comment look at this chris let me show you this it's getting better because i've been telling people uh yeah it's getting better because i've been telling people to call the action I, you guys can't see anything i don't think yeah i can't see your phone uh, yeah it disappears in the green screen trust mm-hmm. me when i tell you on any given video of mine 71 percent of you are not subscribed 71 percent used to be 75 it's gone down because i've been asking for the subscribe mm-hmm. so make sure what's wrong with me you just subscribe, hit the button. What you want to rely on the algorithms to let you know when is the next video that you should see of mine? No, subscribe, hit the bell. You take control. The power is in your hands. Who knows better? You or the algorithms? Tell me that, and then vote with that. Subscribe, like, hit the bell button, comment, share for bonus points. Share. And uh, with that being said, Chris, welcome. Hey, thank you welcome back man it's been a while since we've done one of these proper slides slide yeah, it's been about three weeks yes way too long way too long and january is still not over um which is a little bit crazy to me considering all that's been going on with us uh yep. yours just starting too yeah so this is good for you sites okay three things clinical research sites should do now now, if you're a, somebody who's trying to get into clinical research as an employee, don't turn it off. No, no. Come back. Your finger's hovering on the scroll. Don't. Look, this is what sites should do now. It means that they're probably not doing it. This is what you can be doing, and you can tell the sites in your area, hey, are you doing this? Because I do this. I watch these two lunatics on YouTube. They tell me this is a good idea. And yeah, so absolutely. Uh, say exactly that and lead with Chris Sopper as the lunatic number one. No, you're lunatic number one. I'm number two. Uh, either way, guys, <laughs> don't leave if you're a job seeker because this is good for you too. Okay. This is how you got to read between the lines. It's why you got to subscribe, like, hit the bell button and comment. Okay. So what research sites should be doing? So sites should look for ways to be more efficient. I talk to I can't talk about it yet, but I'm talking to a tech vendor, a big tech vendor in the space, and uh, they're looking at exactly doing this and preparing sites better for the future. I'm not saying virtual trials is going to replace research. It's not. It's just going to be an additional component of research. What we're more likely to see is some kind of hybrid element, part virtual, part traditional Uh and it's more for the convenience of the patients, not to replace the sites. This is my opinion. Chris has his own opinions. Uh, why don't you give your opinions on? Uh, well, I would agree with everything you've said, but I do think good, that good. the the possibility exists at some point in time as technology advances that oh, sure. people could be replaced. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean that can happen to all of us, you know. Um, but this industry, things move so slowly. Oh yeah, it's like the slowest moving industry um in the world uh the only times it was fast was during developing this vaccine Mm -hmm. (laughs) then it was really quick uh but usually that's the opposite guys okay things are slow slow to adopt technologies all that kind of stuff the current COVID-19 pandemic means it is crucial for sites to find ways to adapt while protecting patients staff and other personnel this is true Chris you and I just had COVID uh a little over a month ago, we're monitoring for our CRO, DSCS CRO That's behind right. Shimless Plug. And the site, you know, they don't want us to be back there uh, without a test. So, you know, like 
definitely uh, be use caution if you're a site. Protect your staff, protect the patients, protect the personnel. Uh, most of the changes that you guys can make as site sites are simple and can be implemented by new as well as established sites. Um, and I guess we can go to the next slide to get some tangible stuff out of this. Increase overhead cost. So this is all you because you do this all the time. Yeah, I don't, Chris I don't does think, this way more than me. I don't think increasing your overhead cost will help with the safety of protecting your, your staff. But at indirectly least it does. Indirectly. Uh, you'll be paid accordingly. Well, I guess you, you indirectly, sure. You do more cleaning and such. You can't protect others unless you're taking care of financially yourself. Mm, I suppose that's true. So in increasing overhead costs, sites should renegotiate their budgets with sponsors due to the additional costs of running clinical trials during the COVID-19 pandemic. And absolutely. So uh, we have many clients throughout the country and we sent out an email. Uh, when was that email sent? Like November? I, even before that, I think. We sent an initial one in March 2020 when the pandemic yeah, first hit. What, yeah, so I was thinking. And only or a April. few. It was like April 2020. Only maybe six or seven clients reached out to me about, can you take care of this? I don't know if the rest handled it themselves because we have mm -hmm. uh, 70 clients. So, um, and maybe they did, I don't know. Um, 70 and growing and growing. Right, right. And so of the six, all six had some sort of um, additional overhead. Many was just a fee, and the least was like 500, if I recall correctly, because again, this was back in March or April. Um, but yeah, in some way, they were given additional uh, additional monies to cover these costs. So yeah, you certainly should be asking for this. And currently, with the budgets we're negotiating, um, we're asking for a much higher overhead. What's the I've, rationale? Like, what are, um, the second bullet point you think that's uh, still valid? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't so, it be? So, let's read it for the podcast listeners because they're dying to uh, hear this. Sure. Expenses such as sterilization before and after patient or monitor visits require additional supplies and attention from cleaning staff. And that's ab absolutely true. Um, one of our clients say basically they, they sterilize the whole room mm -hmm. when they have a, like a COVID patient in the room. Um, the whole room gets sterilized. It's, it's not too. used for the next two hours. <laughs> I would too. They're bleach on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what they're using to clean it, but yeah, they, they put some sort of hospital um, grade disinfectant. It's, it's, right. it's expensive and it's hard to find right now too. Yep. So there's certainly additional costs for, for uh, materials and for staff time when dealing with these uh, with COVID. I mean, yeah. everything has to be sterile. You don't want to be, Passing COVID along to everybody that comes in the room. So got to, got to protect everybody. As sites may be forced to reduce the amount of patients that can be seen during each visit. This can affect the amount of staff hours. And it also affects, you know, staff working from home. All right. Some employees need like a better laptops. Um, you know, so the employer has to come out of pocket to buy a laptop for the coordinators working from home half the time. Mm -hmm. How could we do zoom meetings how can they do their work properly uh without a laptop because you don't want them taking the computer home uh, the office computer home especially if there's uh confidential stuff on there patient stuff you know that's not for the house that's for the work so you may need a new computer uh, for your staff there's all kinds of costs that you can justify uh increased overhead costs and sponsors have been what pretty uh amenable to this yeah, I've I've had as high as seventy percent overhead. Seventy? Mm -hmm. Wow. We yeah, we need to get some of those studies. Now those are for straight COVID studies, like active yeah. COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're trying to get one of those, two of those actually, at our site, two of our sites right now. But studies in general, the, the overheads, the overhead used to be twenty five percent. I would say it was the average. Yeah. It's probably just for a typical study, not COVID related. It's probably the average is 30, 35 now. Okay. So it's come up a bit because you still have to do the cleaning, right? You're still yeah. cleaning after patients probably a little more thoroughly now than you were previously. And guess what? Things we don't talk about, but are like reality day-to-day -day stuff. Your cleaning crew that you have might ask for more during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's riskier. 
and they probably need like more supply. So all this stuff like adds up, guys. It's all part yep. of overhead and things that yep. you may not be thinking about. Yep. Couldn't agree more. I mean, janitor, you want to talk about practical. Janitors are super practical. That's their business. They have to be practical. You know, why am I going to use a, you know, hospital grade disinfectant now? That's expensive. And I'm not, I'm charging you the same fee. Mm -hmm. I mean, things that we don't think about and sponsors don't think about. Um, anticipate remote monitoring costs. So I think we're headed back towards uh, traditional monitoring very soon. It's now January 28th, 2021, the birthday of my newest nephew. He just was born today. Clayton Daniel Sfera, the middle name after me. Um, so January 28th, 21 uh, is when we're recording this podcast. I'm talking to numerous CRAs on live streams, and they're all telling me that their travel schedules are returning back to normal. Normal. It's starting to return back to normal. It's not normal yet, but it's returning. It's starting to. Like they're booking more flights. It's starting to, the machine's starting to crank out again. See, that's but remote monitoring still might be used, like hybrid, you know, hybrid studies. That's kind of surprising to me that it's returning to more towards normal, being how many deaths. I mean, deaths had like 4,000 deaths just the other day for COVID. Yeah, yeah, and California <laughs> reopened uh, uh, into the count, the purple tiers now. Uh, so it yeah, was on lockdown it, for it, the longest it, time. It, none of it makes sense. Yeah, no. Well, but, but I'm telling you what I'm hearing. Sure, but... You know, when they shut everything down, the deaths were under a thousand a day. Now they're four thousand a day or three thousand a day, and let's open back up. I just think they see that they can't afford it anymore. Yeah, that might be part of it. Um, so sites should renegotiate their budgets to include additional costs for remote monitoring, especially during this pandemic. Sponsors have slowly implemented remote monitoring practices, although it's headed back towards traditional. But if you happen to be on a study with remote monitoring, I mean, look at that picture. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's somebody scanning documents. Okay, this takes time. Mm -hmm. Guys, I mean, the reason Chris and I still go into the site that we're monitoring to monitor is because this takes time on the coordinator. We're the ones that go in there and scan so that our yep. interns from the CRA Academy yep. uh, can remote monitor. Okay, so you gotta if you're a site and you're being asked to do this like you gotta have some kind of uh either part of your overhead how have you been doing it like for remote monitoring is it part of overhead or is it a separate fee for scanning separate, separate fee so it's like a line item and uh, like in addition to study coordinator fee there's a remote scanner fee it's or a, something it's an invoiceable item yeah oh invoiceable okay what are you able to get like a ballpark um like 200 a day for the days that are be like for every day that the study's going on, every day that the study's monitored. Oh, every day it's monitored. Okay, so every IMV uh, basically uh, mm -hmm. is two hundred dollars. Okay, I not every IMV, every IMV day. Okay, every IMV day. So if they're doing like an IMV, but there's it, it's like two days or in three a row. days or whatever. Right. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Is that is that defined in the contract like specifically or? Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's uh, good to know. Okay. So there you go, guys. That's You get free advice from DSCS. You know, it makes sense to be clients of ours. 1300 bucks a month. I mean, Vader agrees. He, even he can't wait. He's chomping at the bit to be a client, but he doesn't have money. He maybe has Dogecoin. That's a dog on the logo. Um, but um, he's. I hear he's a fan. Uh, but it's, I mean, seriously, guys, we negotiate your budgets, do your, do your source for you, help you get studies, do your feasibilities. If you want, bring you studies, then when sponsors come to us, uh, do outbound, do inbound. You can call me or Chris, other members of the team anytime. Uh, so yeah, just a little side note. We go to the next slide. Uh, we could, we could hit the next slide, Chris. Sorry, my dog just stopped barking. Well, he got excited. You know, I don't blame him, actually. Yeah, absolutely. He's smart. Um, anticipate remote monitoring costs. Okay. So this typically means more scanning for sites that don't use eSource. I can't wait 
I'm just developing some stuff regarding eSource. Can't say anything yet, but this is coming, guys. This stuff, let me tell you, eSource is going to be a game changer. Uh, many sites will start spending more time scanning because the, the reality is most sites don't use eSource right now. And this can be a time-consuming process. So like Chris has been saying, you can justify additional costs by creating SOPs for remote monitoring. You should actually have SOP for our client. That's another thing our clients get. You get intralinks via access, which is a secure portal for free just by being a client. So you can, it's a secure place to upload uh, your documents so the monitors can review and then you take the access away when they leave. How many of our clients actually take advantage of this? Like what percentage? Not a very high percentage. Not a very high, and um, but it's free. It's part of a, what you're paying for. You know, you can you have access to this. Yep. Uh, another option is to indicate that the site is sharing best practices with other sites. This is good too, but you should create your own SOP for this. Um, next slide. Recruit new clinicians. Chris and I favorite activity. Okay. Uh, favorite? Yeah. No, least favorite. Well, not least. <laughs> it's not least. I like talking to doctors, sure. um, but it's uh, definitely time consuming, takes a lot of energy, requires you to give the same sales pitch over and over again. But I'm such a firm believer in more clinicians doing research and eliminating the barriers for them to do research because the average clinician thinks it's like so complicated to do research. And in reality, maybe it is, but it's also not because if you partner with the right people, you know, they take care of the complexity. And then mm -hmm. you just, you just, this is what I tell physicians all the time I'm trying to recruit. I just want you to continue being a, a clinician, continue doing your job. It's just going to be in the context of a study now, but you're doing the same thing you're going to be doing as if they're your patient, right? And many times they are your patient. Uh, and I'll take care of me and the staff take care of all the stuff, regulatory, Alcoa, GCP, EDC, queries. We take care of most of it. You just can keep patient oversight, safety oversight. And that's really what you need to do. Like at the end of the day, that's what your PI's responsibility. Do no harm to your patient. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy sell at that point. But it took like 15 years to get the sales pitch down. And it doesn't always come off There's it. like this. There's a nuance to what you said, though, according to protocol. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, yeah, we get into those details later. In the mm -hmm. beginning, there's no protocol to discuss. So that's, not, that's, sure. um, that's information overload usually for the uh, PI when you're just starting out. And that's one thing I noticed for sites that are looking for new clinicians. They'll like approach the clinician with like, five protocols and say, Hey, look at these protocols. It's too much information, guys. These are doctors. They're going to start looking at the science. You know, you need to just talk fundamentals. Okay. Oh, geez. This green screen. Here we go. I have to put it like in front of my face. Can you guys see? No. Can you see? Yeah. This is zoom magic. Okay. This book. That's what you need to know. We don't talk about protocol. Any uh, There's no protocol in here. This is the fundamentals of research and uh, the overview. Protocol is mentioned many times in there. Yes, definitely. Definitely. But can you imagine if we started Nothing getting specific. into specifics on the first date with a clinician? I mean, mm -hmm. that's just not going to happen. Like the too much information. So just basics of research. The protocols will come. We can look at them one-on-one -on -one at that point, assuming you understand research. That's the first step. Okay, so the, now is a good time as ever to recruit physicians. Many have been furloughed. Um, most clinicians still are not operating at full capacity because of COVID. Okay, so you know those the days of those full waiting rooms are over. Um, so they're spacing out their patients more. So they're doing less per day, less billable activity per day. So it's actually a good time to supplement with research. And uh, we've seen that this is true. And we've seen a lot, an increase in the amount of physicians that have called us, Chris, mm -hmm. to start sites uh, last year, 2020, and this year. Um, you can run ads to get patients. You may get, be careful with those because you may get hits from 
clinicians who, you know, are not licensed, um, foreign doctors, you need a licensed physician to be a PI. If you want a sub I, you can have nurse practitioners, um, et cetera. And if you want to do COVID studies, look, I really think that every site that can should consider doing and like at least an outpatient COVID study. There are so many of those studies out there. Sponsors understand that nobody's experienced with COVID. So the experience thing doesn't matter almost because it's nobody's experienced with COVID. We're all research naive. And we know a lot of sites. I mean, they don't want to come on and get interviewed because they're making so much money. They don't want to be featured, you know, but we know a lot of sites that are brand new to research that did COVID studies outpatient enrolled a whole bunch of people and have a lot of billable activity and not bad to get a, your company off the ground. Mm-hmm. All right. And if you need, if your site needs a cash uh, infusion, I do recommend a COVID study. I think the outpatient ones are obviously easier than the inpatient ones. The inpatient ones are tough, but if you have those capabilities, if you can do inpatient, if you have those capabilities, there's no shortage of studies for you. Let me tell you that. Like those, they're looking for sites constantly for inpatient, outpatient a little less, but even those, there's like no shortage of those studies either. Uh, what do you think, Chris? Yeah, certainly. I mean, you have a study right now. You, I mean, they have Two. to be Calif- you'd have to be in California, I think, or oh, maybe Arizona. Oh, one where I'm the CRA, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's an inpatient COVID study though, but it's uh, both, it's inpatient, but then it becomes outpatient. Um, even that is tough to get sites for. But they want uh, you to monitor it, so it needs to be in California or Arizona. Yeah, SoCal or uh, Arizona. So message me if you're interested. And uh, I'm also working on getting two outpatient study COVID studies for two of our sites that we own. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some sticks on the fire, so I don't know if anything will materialize, but maybe. Um, and I haven't been on clinicaltrials.gov at all to try to get studies yet uh, for the two sites that we own. So that's the slides, guys. I mean, that's no. in a nutshell uh, what you should be doing right now, January 28th, 2021. And anything else you want to say? No, I think that's excellent content. All right, good stuff. Um, I'm going to go make sure you guys support. So subscribe, like, comment, get the book if you haven't already. If you have, then thank you. Uh, and just tell a friend about it. Your and, computer's yeah. trying to green screen you. Yeah. It's a new computer. First world problems we got to fix. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and listening. And thank you, Chris. And we'll catch you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>